got some miniatures in. These are from Geek Dad Miniatures. And I think all the models are from Real Stone. I'm not entirely sure about ordering things off eBay. I don't know what kind of quality I'm getting. I don't know what size these miniatures are. I've got a feeling they're gonna be disappointingly small. Uh, this guy didn't really say what the scale was. I'm just going off the original mini. Uh, I found out after I ordered all of his pictures are from the guys that make it. And I don't even know if he has the rights to distribute. Uh, I'm new to the ordering 3D printed stuff, and so I don't know what all the rules behind that are. But let's see what we got. And if nothing else, it'll be good to hear my disappointment. Let's see what we have here. We got a letter. Thank you for your purchase. Please contact me if you have any questions or concerns at all. Thanks, Geek Dad Miniatures. Yep, they look small. There should be four minis in here. See what we got. That's not a mini. That's not a mini. Yeah, they're gonna be small. Oh, and unassembled apparently. You guys might be able to see what those are. I'm just gonna get them all out. We'll start with this guy. First thing I noticed right away is it's tacky and I'm seeing some different texture on the resin. What does that mean? Well, I have noticed that some other minis that I've got that I know for sure were good quality uh, have had this same issue where they're kind of sweating and being wrapped in plastic, I think makes them do that. But that said, I don't know for sure that they're supposed to do that. So this could be that it's not cured well, and that worries me. Let's look at some other things. So supports, it's got supports on it. Those will need to be cut away. I am very worried about this sweating. I mean, I'm touching resin right now with my fingers. Uh, okay, so this one, you guys might recognize her. These look like supports here. I'm not sure though, I'm gonna double check. Uh, her extra hands. Got some junk on them, it looks like, but I'm not sure. So I need to check the model. Uh, they're definitely not cleaned up. I would say the they were the resin was broken away, or the supports were broken away at like their intended spots, but not cleaned up. Uh, this one's also sweating right here. Okay, uh, I think this is um, Melina. Gosh, it's not Melina. Ronnie. Uh, Ronnie's base. Pretty sick, honestly. All right, next one. Rotund Godsend. This guy's really legit. He's pretty good looking. Details there. I like the detail. He has a support booger on his nose. Uh, supports stuck all over him. And he's gooey. And then we have the lanky god skin. He looks really good, too. This print's actually probably the better of the bunch. All right, so I'm back with these uh, minis that I got printed. I'm gonna say they're 95% good now. Um, what I did, I took some ISO. This is 70%. The internet said 90%, but I live in podunk in a post-COVID world, so you do what you can do. And it said to go ahead and clean that oozing resin off. Now, the reason for it, uh, there could be a couple reasons. One, could just be bad. Two, and what I think might be the case is resin is oozing anywhere that it can. So we can't see any pores on the miniature, but there's pores in there. And the resin inside the model is finding its way out. So these are printed solid. Some of them uh, will have resin that's uncured on the inside. Now that could be on the part of the printer um not having a good curing process it could be the model it's like in this case I, I can't really say that i'm surprised after what i've read uh the problem is, is that there's uncured resin trapped inside the model and if there's nowhere for it to escape it will ooze out of the pores that's what the internet says so i did the research for us here now i've cleaned it up and it feels a lot better i'm 
I've got a lot less uh, resin on the model. This guy's probably gonna need another pass. Anywhere that it's shiny, I don't know if the camera's catching that, but there's some really glossy spots, and those are the spots that I feel like has resin coming out of it. So I'm gonna say, uh, first of all, uh, give credit to the printer and, and say that it's an oozing issue and not something necessarily that they could have controlled. I, I wanted to do this and I've got two things I want to cover here. So I wanted to just buy some 3D printed minis off the internet, not knowing what kind of quality I'm getting, not knowing what I'm getting at all really. Kind of for a, a lesson here, you know, you go on eBay, there's a million guys printing minis they're printing a million different minis and you don't really know anything about these printers. For the first topic is as a buyer, what can you do? As always, if it's on eBay or whatever, you know, use the rating system. Make sure that not just they're well rated, but that they're regularly used. The next thing I would do is uh, check out and see if they have a scale for the model on the page in the description the guys that make these minis, I'm pretty confident that they sell them at D&D scale, then they sell them at a larger scale also, uh, like a wargaming scale. I think these are printed at probably one of the smallest levels. Um, and I think that was my first disappointment. If we look at base sizes, this guy fits on a 40 millimeter base. And so think about how much bigger he would be if he was on uh, 70, 80, 100 millimeter, maybe not 100 millimeter, but I was expecting him to be somewhere in that plus 50 range and he's 40. It's just not what I had hoped for. So it's what I expected, but it's not what I was hoping for uh, when I purchased the model. Now, realistically, I think he was five bucks. So five bucks for a D and D scale model. I think that's fair. So as a buyer, just set your expectations for what size mini you're getting. And if you don't know, you should ask the seller before you purchase it. So that's the first thing as a buyer. The second thing as a buyer is you probably want to familiarize yourself a little bit with the 3D printing world, just to understand what these guys are doing. Uh, most of them do not have big commercial printers. They're printing these on their home machines, which means it's gonna take a long time to get to you. It's going to take a lot of work on their part to get to you. You don't know what kind of print you're going to get. There's a big difference between resin printed with UV resin and uh, 3D printed with like the wire fed 3D printers. The other thing I would say as a buyer, and, and this is kind of a to eat your own kind of thing. Uh, I kind of regretted buying these guys from the printer that I did. Uh, not knowing if he actually had the rights to print it. Not kinda, I really did. Cause I don't know if he should have printed this, these or not. That's something to think about is you don't wanna buy bootleg stuff. Um, you wanna support the creators. And uh, in this case, I don't think the creators are gonna get any money out of this. Uh, maybe that's part of their model. Some, some guys will sell the files and that's good enough. Uh, I don't know the situation, but just be careful with it. Uh, you don't want to, you want to make sure your money's going to the right place so that you can get more of that content. I also wanted to maybe make some suggestions for a seller. Uh, I think it's awesome that we can print these things at home. And I think it's awesome that creators are letting us sell these printed things at home. Uh, I think that's really, really amazing. Uh, and I think that because of that opportunity, sellers, we need to take a responsibility for some of the work, right? So there's guys that are selling pre-supported models with the support still attached. Okay, if you say you, you're doing that, that's cool. If you're saying you've got supports attached and you're sending them uncleaned, I don't think that's really cool. I think you should do the work. That's like bare minimum and it's a risk to the buyer. Uh, and it puts a lot of onus on the buyer to make sure the end outcome is good. I think that one, in your listings, you should say clearly, cleaned or uncleaned, S supports attached still or not, and you should put some information about your curing in there, I think, uh, just that you know, we don't know how this was cured. He could have held a flashlight over it, or he could have had a pro-grade curing station, or he could have set these outside for two weeks. We don't 
We don't know what he did. And I think as a buyer, I would like to see that. The next thing I'd like to see is, like I said, we need to know what scale the minis are, what size base they fit on. And there's a chance the seller didn't even know that when he sold it to me. I don't, I'm not real cool with that. If you're trying to sell a product, you should put on there clearly what scale you're printing it at, especially if it's a model like this, where it comes in variable sizes, um, where it could be you know, six inches tall or one inch tall. We need to know as a buyer uh, what you're selling. The third thing is make sure your quality's there. I saw quite a few comments where people were getting minis and they were oozing resin and, um, they, and the reason was is that the mini just wasn't clean. It wasn't actually oozing, it just had resin where in hard to reach places and the person that cleaned it threw it in a dip or threw it in a sonic cleaner and then walked away and shipped it. So make sure if you're a seller, take your time and clean these things up because you might get someone like me that has no freaking clue what's going on and you're gonna get a bad review because my mini's sticky and has stuff all over it. Um, you know, I, I don't think you should expect people to understand that you printed it at home and that they should have leniency in their expectations. I don't think that's fair as a seller. As a seller, don't expect that your buyer has any kind of knowledge. These were not ready to go on the table when I got them. They were sticky and oozing. Now that could be something that happened between the seller sending it to me and it getting to me from FedEx, right? So I think on my little card, on my invoice, the thank you is nice, but I think it would be nice to have something in there that says, hey, just so you know, minis can sweat in transit. So just tell me, hey, you might find some resin on your miniature. If you do, use isopropyl alcohol and a Q-tip to clean it off and it should be good to go. Uh, you might also mention, hey, you may find supports on your miniature. Uh, if you do, they can be removed with a Zacto knife. You know, I mean, I don't think it's fair that you're into 3D printing and so you expect your buyer to be into 3D printing. That's not the case, right? It, your buyer is into miniatures. You're into 3D printing. So take some initiative and make sure that your buyer knows. Uh, that said, in the end, I'm pretty happy, honestly. I mean, these look amazing. And for the price, I mean, I paid Reaper Bones prices for this. Look at this thing. I mean, that's a great boss to put on the table. You slam that dude down, yeah, people, your, your players are gonna be scared. Um, Steinhardt comes in, oh yeah. These guys are gonna be part of the Eldritch Hunt for sure. So I'm really happy, uh, took a little work, took a little forgiveness um, and a little understanding, uh, but I'm pretty happy. Let's just see if these things stop sweating and then I'll be really happy.